first stuff that we did. So why are we using demo packages? And you know, I, I hope you're all aware of what the data management framework is. Um, but um, we're using the, the, that's the framework where in Dynamics you use entities to import stuff. And so um, uh, uh, that's that's what we're talking about today. So you know, the, today the demo data database that we use is actually shipped as you know as part of the product. It's a it's a fixed database that we add to to, a, to an image on LCS. Um, it's very large, um, and um, and uh, and so it just adds a lot of a lot of size to the the image that we have. Um, the, the analytics that we have in there right now don't look that good. You know, the, the dates are always changing. The um, you know the, the 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 transactions are already locked in. So so you know at, at one point in time it looks good, and then within a month or two it just it doesn't look good. The, the, the demos data is out of date. Uh, my perfect example is always the collection module. So you know everybody's 180 days overdue very quickly, um, and so you know that, that that's you know we didn't want it to look that way. Um, the number of companies. So if you look at it there, we have like about 20 companies, I think, in the demo data, and a lot of those are countries and stuff. But over time, it's just grown, and, and you know, which company do you use? And, and frankly, the companies that we have don't necessarily represent any one kind of a typical customer out there. Um, we, have, you know, we want supply chain information in there, but, but the supply chain transactions um, affect the financial transactions, and so over time, that uh, disconnect has kind of gotten worse, um, and you know we we really like the demo data that's out there. There's a lot of really good demo data in there, but there's a lot of stuff that's kind of uh, getting in the way of the, of a great demo. And so you know the finance transactions is one of those. And then you know for us actually internally maintenance is a little bit high. Um, it just we are running scripts to update stuff, and frankly, if you have to fix it, you have to run scripts to update stuff. And and uh, we wanted to find a way to to kind of get rid of that that cost of taking care of it and and releasing it. So what you know? So what did we want to do to make this thing you know better and work? Um, we wanted we wanted to support comprehensive end-to-end -end demos for Dynamics 365. Um, the, the idea isn't just to show off the the credit limit. The idea is to show off you know uh, procure to pay, um, order to cash, that kind of stuff. Uh, we wanted to have realistic demo data, so uh, you know something that reflects our customer base. And so we want you know we want to. We want to take a hard look at the again the demo data we have is good we we you know there's some good stuff in it there's a lot of stuff we need and we wanted to, we took another look at it and said hey is it is it you know after time over time here you know it's changed is it good and and should we keep it and what else should we add to it we still want to showcase our analytics Power BI is our is is one of the biggest things we want to show it's very important it's a it, a lot of great insights it's just you know, it's a great part of our product, but we want to make sure we showcase that. So, you know, as we're going through this demo data, you know, we're, we, in, we're trying to keep analytics in mind uh, as, a, as a key key component of our demos. Um, quality over quantity. Uh, you know, we're not if if two databases or two companies make you know make a killer demo, then we want to have two two companies. If if it's, it takes 20 companies to have a killer demo, we'll, we'll put in 20. But we we don't want to just have a lot of stuff out there. We want to have good stuff out there. And so we were trying to focus on cleanup, uh, minimizing it a little bit, you know, reducing it down a little bit. But in a lot of cases, you'll see most of the demo data we had before. Um, and we want companies that are more realistic, um, you know, real scenarios and real best practices. And so we were taking a look at those company configurations. And the last thing is kind of the most important thing is we wanted flexible packages that can be modified and combined. Um, today you get one big pile of demo data, and if you want public sector, you got to get a different database of demo data. And so, um, you know, we wanted to make it more flexible so you can you can just take the demo data that you need for a certain implementation um, or a certain demonstration and only use those packages that you need, and you don't have to load all the other stuff that came with it. So how did we do this stuff? So what we did is we used, again, we used the data management framework. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it or are, are lightly familiar with it, the data management framework is a series of, of data entities that import data. In most cases, it's Excel spreadsheets, but you can use just about any format that we, we support, XML and CSV and that kind of stuff. But the idea is, is that uh, you can use a data entity like a customer entity or a, um, or a vendor entity, and you can import data, like I said, using spreadsheets or CSV or whatever you want, and that entity uh, reads that, that file and imports it. A data package is a bunch of those files, and so vendors, uh, you know, vendor parameters, you know, all the things it takes to import accounts payable, all the things it takes to import accounts receivable, that's a whole series of spreadsheets using a whole series of entities. All that together is called a data package. 
So what we did is we, we divided up the demo data into, into um, single reloadable packages. So you, you got you know, one source of your demo data in a set, a set of packages. There's actually 13 packages today. There'll probably be more in the future. We wanted no dependency on a shipping database. And so you don't need to have um, uh, go into like LCS and, and ask for demo data. You, know, you can get an empty database and load anything you want based on these packages. Um, we'll talk about LCS a little bit later. And we wanted to make them very modular. So what we did is we broke it down and we have a set of shared data, which is just every, every, something that every, you know, the stuff that crosses all the companies. Then we have financials data by company. We have supply chain data by company. And then we're going to add retail packages. And we don't have that right now, but we're going to add retail. We're going to have public sector. But we're trying to break it down into kind of more logical components. We actually have a project accounting component. Um, so you can, again, mix and match the stuff that you want to put in there. Um, we'll add packages as, as we add more scenarios. We, we have lots more scenarios we haven't implemented yet. Um, and then we're, we're, we set it up so you can actually do a mix and match. So if you want the global information, you want the core financials, um, but you don't want the supply chain, but maybe you want two companies, you, know, you can kind of mix and match to fit the kind of demo that you want. One key thing that we added is the ability to post transactions. And so <clears throat> Uh, the, one of the biggest issues we had with demo data was that there's already posted transactions in the demo data and you can't get them out. I mean, that's what accounting is all about. You can't delete transactions. But in a demo scenario, that, that makes it kind of tough because um, now you've got a free text invoice posted a year ago or something like that. And you don't want that. So what we did is we added the capability to, it's called ready to post. I'll talk about it a little bit later. But we added the ability to import transactions and then post them automatically so that your demo data is automatically set up. Something we want to add in the future that we haven't done yet is the capability to change the dates. And so to bump the demo data dates up, uh, you can do that now with, um, with uh, editing the spreadsheets. But in reality, I think we just want to have something more automatic. So you bring these packages in. You say, by the way, I want to shift all the dates up like six months or, or something like that. And um, it would update your demo data. <clears throat> So what did we do in the fall release? And so this is this is stuff is already out there. It's out there on LCS. I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you a link, um, or I'll show you how it works, where where it's at and stuff in a little bit here. But what did we ship? We shipped 13 packages. We shipped um, in those packages. You'll find five companies and the shared data. <clears throat> so the five companies is HQ US is the first company, and this is the main company in the demo data. It is patterned after USMF. But we wanted to change the name to more reflect the kind of stuff we're talking about. USMF meant U.S. manufacturing, and not all demos are U.S. manufacturing. So we wanted to make you know, a headquarters U.S. company. And that company, if you added all packages together, you get financials, discrete manufacturing, uh, and supply chain, project, and then some transactions. Um, the, uh, the Supply chain, well, actually, all, the whole thing for HQ US was, was created based on USMF. And then inside the financials, what we did was we said, hey, we want, somebody might want to do a financials demo, but not necessarily load all the supply chain. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. And so we put basic supply chain in the financials. It just, there's five items. I think there's two items and three, three uh, services. But you can do an order to cash, and you can do a, a you know, procurement to pay. You can do all that whole scenario with just the financials if you want to, but it's just a very limited number of, 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 um, of items in there. If you add the supply chain on top of it, then you get all the wonderful warehouses and sites and, and all that extra stuff that you want. But if you don't need that, but you still want to show off how to do a sales order or a purchase order or a purchase rack, you can go ahead and, and just use the financials. The second company is called HQEU, and we wanted to have a non-US headquarters that would have financials and transactions. And, and um, it's right now, that one is not very very full yet. We, we, we've basically focused on the US to get that started. One of the next things we want to work on is the, the, the non-US headquarters, so we have a kind of a worldwide, you know, worldwide set of demo. The financials are, um, are, are there, and they're not, as, they're not as beefed up as the HQ US, but they're there. The main reason we did put it in there, though, was so we could have intercompany scenarios. Um, you, know, you can set up intercompany between the companies. We have some basic GL intercompany set up right now, and the SCM team is, is working right now on, um, the supply chain team is working right now on developing, uh, in, you know, increasing the intercompany to cover their area, but we haven't released it yet. 
The third company is a really tiny company. It's called Cons, or it's a consolidation company. This is where you can do your consolidations. And so we've got, you know, the whole um, uh, eliminations thing set up there. It's just financials. And it's really like, it's, it's probably eight entities that we load some data for. So it's very small, but it's just meant for your consolidations. The, um, the next two are process industry companies, um, one for chemicals and one for food and beverage. So the process industries um, companies, the financials are identical to HQUS. There's a couple minor differences, and we're, gonna, we're trying to actually, in this next release, we're going to make it so that they are fully identical. But overall, the PICH and PIFB are, are almost identical to HQUS financials. The big difference there is in the chemicals and the food and beverage. Our supply chain team has gone um, and taken the USPI company and the USP2 company and, and, and made, you know, and converted them so that they sit on top of the financials that we created. So you have a process industry specific chemicals company and you have a process industry specific food and beverage company. Um, again, the financials are, are the same as HQUS though. The last one is the shared data and that's actually the first one you load. Um, and what that is is um, that shared layer is the things that everybody uses. It loads the global address book, it loads up all the legal entities, it loads up um, uh, you know, uh, some of the chart of account stuff, some of the shared ledger stuff. I mean, it loads up anything that is shared across multiple companies. That's it's a single package. So how does it look? So, so here are the actual packages, um, or the way the packages are organized. The global information is that system and shared layer. It sits on the bottom, and it has to go first. You have to do it. Um, the second one is it's a layer of core financials. We have five of those packages. You see the HQ US is, is bigger. Um, and then you have the other four packages. Those are all financials packages. They go into individual legal entities, and so you can load one of them or all of them. It's up to you how you want to do that. Um, there is a discrete manufacturing uh, um, for supply chain, and that was um, it was actually a very so large uh, package. We split it up into two, and the actual overall goal is to make that a basic pay, uh, supply chain base, and then actually have some very detailed stuff in the next package. But right now, we just simply split the HQ US supply chain into two packages. You'll probably want to load them both um, to get the supply chain for HQ US, and then we have another package for chemicals and another package for food and beverage. Um, for public uh, project accounting and expense, we have an, a separate package for that. Right now it's just set up, but it is a special package that is just loaded if you want project accounting and expense. Uh, the setup for that is, is, is loaded as well. So this is our current set of packages that we've got loaded today. And again, you, you can kind of pick and choose. If you only want HQUS, you got the global, you got the core financials HQUS. And, and uh, then you've got HQ US supply chain and discrete manufacturing, and if you want it, public sector, uh, private uh, project accounting and expense. And then you could skip the other four companies and the other two uh, food and beverage packages. It's, it's totally up to you how you want to load them. So what did we release? We le released the packages, 13 packages. They were delivered as global shared assets in LCS. So if you go out to your LCS site, look for global, the, the, there's, a, there's a tile there for global shared assets. Um, and I'll show you that tile in a minute. Um, or I'll show you where it is. You can find um, all the packages as global shared assets. I'll show you how they're labeled here in a second so you can, um, you can find them out there. We delivered a bunch of scripts. We delivered seven or eight scripts right now. We're working on a whole bunch another set. Um, uh, to, add, to add scenarios, but they're pretty full scenarios, and they're out on partner and customer source right now. You can get to that link. The, um, the documentation for this feature is out on docs.microsoft.com in the Dynamics 365 um, Enterprise Edition area. Actually, if you search for demo data packages, you'll, you'll see the documentations. In those documentations is a, for, is a link to the scripts. So you can actually... Um, you can actually find those scripts and download them like you would any other uh, uh, information from partner source and co partner customer source. Um, the documentation is in docs.microsoft.com. It is uh, quite long, it's a couple pages, so um, you probably want to read it. Uh, with the demo data, we had some limitations in some things we can start up. There are some things that you need to manually start up. It's a couple, three or four of them. And then when you're done loading the data, there's a couple, three or four more things you need to do afterwards to turn on some workflow and things like that. Uh, we haven't automated all that yet. So it's really important to get that documentation first. Read about it, read about the things you need to do. 
um, to get started is not very complicated. It's just there's a couple things we couldn't automate. Um, and do those things first, and then um, load the data, and then um, do that next. Um, it's really important, I'll, I'll bring it up right now, it's really important when you load the data to load it one package at a time. Don't try to load them in parallel. Uh, it, um, it, there's just some, a lot of dependencies going on there, so the best thing to do is load a package, let it finish, load another one, let it finish. Um, the TSPs, we worked with them, um, they're aware of it, um, they're, they're aware of the, of the, uh, of the packages. They're not necessarily experts on them, but they're aware of the packages, and so um, uh, we, we briefed them, and we're, we're trying to make those connections with TSPs. Um, uh, we've got the, some connections right now, and we just, you know, as we move forward, we don't want to keep keep the talks going because, um, frankly, um, our TSPs have really, really good uh, demo scenarios that we want to use. There is a private Yammer group set up for partners for feedback. If you want to be actively involved in providing feedback on the on the demo data, um, we monitor that every day, um, and you want to be part of that, you just um, uh, just request it. You know, you can have, you can send me an email or um, uh, or uh, yeah, just send me an email. Uh, M Faulkner at Microsoft.com. Okay, the last feature we talked about. This one's really important because it really helps you know automate that. Nobody wants to post a bunch of um, things manually, and so. When we looked at this package thing, we said, hey, if we don't put in a, some kind of a posting program that automatically does this, we're, we, you know, you guys would be posting, you know, 10, 15, 20 more things all by yourself, and you don't want to do that. So what we did is we created this the concept called uh, ready to post. It's on the system administration menu. You'll see it says batch ready to post. And it, it, it'll, it'll come up with a form. And what we've done is we've got a form, and we've got automation behind it. So what the form does is it says, it's asking you, what do you want to post automatically? And we have 19 document types, uh, lead, general ledger journals, sales order uh, packing slip, sales order invoice, purchase order invoice. I mean, there's, there's 19 different documents out there that you, want, that you can do. And so if you were doing this manually, you would go in there and you would say, uh, add a line, post all ledger transactions, and then it would ask you what date range or what document range. And so you can say, I only want to post any ledger transactions uh, in a bat, in a, in a journal that has um, March 1st through March 15th. Or I want to post sales invoice, or um, uh, like sales, invo sales orders of a certain number. Anyway, so it gives you ranges, but you can say do all of them as well. And then what happens is, is um, before you do that, you need to start the scheduler. And there's a scheduler, it's, it's like a batch it's like a batch waiting to see the screen to create a batch. So the batch watches the, the data coming into the screen, and it says, do I see a line in this, in, in this UI? Do I see um, somebody had keyed in, post a general journal? If it sees it, it goes and grabs that line and says, oh, you want to post general journals. I'm going to look at the original journal uh, code that uh, posts a journal. I'm going to call that code, feed it the right query, and then actually execute a batch or send off a batch as if you had been in the journal posting yourself. So we're using standard terminology or our standard uh, functionality to, to post this general journal or this AP invoice. We're using the current posting routines. We're just sending off a batch as if you had keyed it in, you know, as if you had gone into that user interface. So um, what we also did is we also created an entity that will import into this ready to post form. So if you had five different sets of, um, if you imported five different kinds of documents, like you imported a bunch of free text invoices, a bunch of general journals, fixed asset uh, transactions, things like that, and you imported those into the demo, into the demo data, they're there, but they're, they need to be posted. So then we created an entity that, ha that will read another spreadsheet that says, what stuff do you want to post? It fills in the UI, um, the batch scheduler is watching for it, it sees that list of four or five things you want to post, and, it, and it, then it it um, executes batches in the batch framework to, to post those items for you. So um, it's pretty powerful. Um, if you want to ask that question, yes, um, you can use it for non-demo data. It can be used for any data. So you can automatically post things as they, as they come in. You just have to make sure you populate the batch ready to post uh, table with using an entity with the things that you want to have it post automatically. So there are still some things missing from the supply chain area. There's stuff missing from the financials too, but here's some key things in the supply chain area. Uh, we don't have lean manufacturing yet. Uh, we don't have the, the uh, supply chain in our company. 
the, the Power BI is not, as, is not populated yet. We've got some of it, but not all of it. Uh, time and attendance needs to be added. Um, some project changes, project changes cases are not there, and some trade promotions. We had some entities we needed to create, and one of the good things about creating demo data is if you don't have an entity, we, we immediately log a bug, and we make sure entities are getting created. So that's working out. And the second thing is, is um, in a real world, you would never import a sales order you know, for two months ago. You just import a sales order today, and you get it done. But you know, for Power BI, we need to be able to import into prior periods. You know, we can do that with a general journal. We can kind of do that with free text invoices, but we can't do that with things like sales orders and purchase orders. And so we don't have that capability yet. We have to figure out how we're going to do that. And so that's why we haven't quite got the Power BI thing all totally worked out yet. So documentation. So the URL in the upper left-hand corner, and you know, you'll be able to pull this off the PowerPoint. Um, that's where you go. It's it's called generate demo data packages. But you can just search for demo data packages, and it'll pop right up. Please, please read that document. It's got a lot of information, but it, you know, it's got all those things that you just need to do first. Um, we're not quite 100% fully automated yet, so um, you got to do a couple things there. Again, the Yammer group is called Demo Data and Data Packages. It should be a public um, it should be a public site, so you can just sign up for it. If you have any problems, just email me at Mike M. Faulkner at Microsoft.com. The last thing here is the Global Shared Library. You go into LCS and go click on Data Packages. Now you're going to see a lot of stuff. It says 51 because we have Demo Data Packages. We also have the um, the, uh, the templates for data management in there. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Look for the ones that have demo data at the beginning of it. And you'll notice the naming convention that we have. Um, actually, I'm going to start at the bottom. Demo data is always is going to be first. And then the, the version. We're only going to ship demo data on, um, on, the, on, the, on the, the, the fall and the spring release. Um, so 7.3 is the, is the fall release. And that's the, the release it'll work on. Um, so, so you see the 7.3 is the release, and then you see the 100. So what we did is we made up a simple numbering scheme. You know, you load the packages in the order of that numbering scheme. So you would never load a 300 first. You wouldn't load supply chain first. You want to load system and shared. So you load the one at the bottom first, and then you'll see five of the 200s, financials, uh, HQEU, cons, and you'll see um, HQUS more towards the top. Um, load the financials next. And then you'll see 250 for project management. In that case, you actually, if you're going to use project management, you need to load it right after um, HQ US financials. But everything else um, loads in this order. And then 300s of the supply chain. And you'll notice the supply chain, there's a 1 of 2 for HQ US and a 2 of 2 for HQ US. Normally, we don't split the packages up. In this case, there, were, there actually were five, 600 entities. We wanted to split it up. System and shared, there's probably about 90 to 100 entities in there. Financials is probably 200 entities, so you have about maybe one, 200 um, Excel spreadsheets. Uh, project accounting, I, um, I don't remember that one. I think that's in the 70s. Um, the, the supply chain, one and two together, is about 600, 500 to 600 in there. And the financial trans transactions only has four or five. So the thing is, is you would need to download these today. The future plans that we're hoping for is that you'll be able to go into LCS and then ask for demo data and ask for maybe all the financials, or maybe just HQUS, or what we're, that's our goal. Today, we, haven't, we don't have that. You can't, you can't just load the demo data today. Um, you have to download these packages and then load them yourself manually. So we do have plans for the future. We just don't have that happening right now. So I'll do a quick demo on, on what's out there. Um, any questions we need to deal with at all? or Just what you. I mentioned what you said, but there was the question about will these replace the current way of deploying a demo sandbox box with Contoso, or will that still be possible in the future? Yeah. So we um, we talked to the folks that the long term goal is to is to eliminate the current database, but we cannot in, eliminate the current database until we have the, an appropriate replacement for it. So for the 8.0 release, you will have the capability of still getting the old database. Um, TBD on what's the future, depending on the kind of resources we get. But um, the idea, the idea in the future is that yes, you would be able to go to LCS and say add demo data, and then it would just load that demo data. Like it, we'll have like a, uh, a database backup backpack that they can just load automatically. We didn't get there, so um, you know we have to work with the LCS team to make that happen. Okay. Um, so I will show you a. 
a screen as soon as I log into it. All right, so if you're gonna, you know, this is the data management framework. Um, if you guys are, um, I think this this new look kind of came in uh, platform 11, and um, it's the enhanced. This is the enhanced view. So if you don't have this view, you can click on the upper left hand corner and click on enhanced. Um, this is the list. There's shared, and then I did HQUS, and then I actually loaded project, and then I loaded supply chain, and then I loaded the HQS transactions. Then I did HQEU and that kind of stuff. So for example, if you wanted to just do HQUS, you would just load those six. Um, so this is kind of the look you have, and then on the right-hand side is the execution, and this is to prove this is a real system that we tested it on a million times. Um, just to show we didn't pass all 13 of them, um, but if you have any problems or errors, let us know. You can put it on the AMR group or email me or um, however you want to do it. Um, we, you know, we, we caught an error that was kind of random that we, don't, we didn't see every time, so um, we found that and we're actually logging a bug with, uh, with uh, the, the financials team on the, on the, on the entity. So you know, it does happen. Sometimes these random things happen, so we just want to know what's going on. Um, so let me show you what it looks like. So if, if uh, first of all, let's see what, if I say import shared, This is what a package will look like. You'll see there are, you know, there's a big list of stuff that's going on. What we've done is this is, you know, not only is this demo data, but it's a really good example for what um, uh, partners can start with um, to, to, to import systems. Uh, it, it isn't perfect because, you know, I always use the example of posting profiles. If you import posting post profiles without any table or group settings, you can import them very, very early. But the minute you add a, a table setting that has a certain customer, you have to have the customers loaded before you can load the posting group. So the sequencing really depends a lot on, on, your, on how you do your implementation. But overall, these sequences are already ready to go. Um, these sequences were delivered in platform um, 11 as well uh, as part of the data management framework. And then we used them for the data packages. So you'll see you know, cities, conversions, districts, postal codes, teams all that kind of stuff are all being loaded in here. So there's about, like I said, there's almost 100 in the, in the system and shared. If you go to HQUS, this is the first company, and you see, again, we, we load the number sequences for that company. We had journal descriptions, ledgers, you know, anyway, it's just the whole list of stuff you have to do. But again, it's, it's, it's the order you have to do it, and behind the scenes here um, is a lot of spreadsheets. So let's take a look at that. So these are the packages when you download them. They're not huge, you know, two, two megabytes, four megabytes. Some of them are really tiny. And, um, you know, system and shared, you open up the zip file, and here's all your spreadsheets that match what those, those entities I showed you. So um, if you want to look at the list of, um, you know, cities, just to show you what it looks like, it's just the typical spreadsheet you would use to load entities. Here's the list, here's the cities import, and it's an Excel spreadsheet. The nice thing about this, if you want to, you can edit these spreadsheets and put them back into the zip file. So if you edit, if you wanted to um, edit the chart of accounts or you want to edit the exchange rates, the only risk you have is if you make the edits and, and you, didn't, you don't edit every place that you need the data, you, know, you can have cascading failures because it's looking for certain pieces of data. But the good news is, is you can edit the data. Another thing to consider on demos is if you use our data uh, out of the box, if you use the system and share it, but you want to modify some things, you can create your own separate package with the modifications. So you keep our stuff out there that we created for you, add another set of data to another package that maybe has modifications. Maybe you want to add some more um, cities or counties or, or uh, account structures or whatever you want to do, anything that's very custom to what you want to do, or you want to just change the description of a customer, the, the name of the customer, description of an item, things like that. You can create your own demo data package that only has those entities in it and only has those changes in it, and you can import those on top of our data and actually change our, you know, change the, the values that we have. And in that case, then you don't have to modify our stuff at all. You just simply write your own packages that import uh, on top of the data we put out there. The, if you open up like HQUS financials, you can see that there are 245 items in here. So you know it's a it's a larger package. You go into supply chain. 366, and so there's some large ones, so they might take some time to load. This one's got 200 and some, so this might take some time to load, but, um, but uh, you know, that's the way it is. That's, that's the number, that's the amount of information that we have to load. So you'll see there's 13 packages here, kind of the order you want to load them in. 
Um, and and the, the idea and, and the, th the biggest thing to remember in data management is make sure you're in the right company when you import it. So if it says HQUS, be sure you're in HQUS to load it. System and shared is load out of the DAT company. And the last thing I want to show you is um, the batch ready to post. It's actually here. Down here you see a batch ready to post in periodic tasks. So it's a list page. It shows you, um, you know, we actually imported um, each job is, is a list of jobs. So the job itself has a list of things you want to post. So, um, so we said here I wanted to post invoice journals. I said invoice, po I didn't do any start dates or end dates from or to documents and it was successfully po posted. What this form does is the form will actually show you what you wanted to do and it shows you what happened. So in this case, here's the posting results from that import as well. So if I go back to some of these other ones, like post uh, free text invoices, it actually shows me all the free text invoices that were posted. And if you have any errors, and you can kind of look and see which ones were there. So here's the steps. Step number one, go up here and say create posting monitor. And what that does is simply turn on the batch that watches this form. You do that for every, we have to do that once for every company right now. So you turn on that monitor. And what it's going to do is it's going to monitor this form, the, the table behind this form, and wait to see if there's any information coming in. Um, if, if, if any information comes in, then it will automatically start posting it. Um, if you're doing it manually, you can simply say, I want to do a new, uh, new demo data job. I want to add a line, and I want to do something like, I want to post a free text invoice, and the target is posting. So if I pick something else like sales order, you can have a different target. So I can, I can have a Info, invoice confirm or packing slip, so I can pick different target postings. But free text invoice, I can pick a start and end date or from and to document, and then I can say um, mark these as ready to post. Which that now you see at the top here says it's ready. If I had turned on the monitor, it would actually start posting these. Or if I if I don't want to use the monitor, I want to do it manually. I can just push process documents. It'll actually create the batch for this. So step number one is create the posting monitor to watch it. Step number two is to import the transactions. Um, step number three is import a transactions data package. See, so I got the free text invoice, the fixed asset journals. The last thing at the bottom is this, this Excel spreadsheet that says, here's what I want to post. I want to create a, a data project called uh, post free uh, fixed assets journals. I want to post this document. I want it to post automatically, and I don't have any date ranges on it. That will import into that form I just showed you, and then it'll, it, it, it automatically pushes the mark ready to post button behind the scenes, and then, and then the process monitor comes by and processes the documents for you. So that's how the ready to post thing works, um, uh, to pro controls your system. So do we have any more questions we need to answer? Okay. Kind of the future, and this is we just have this one slide before we're done. Um, what do we want to do? We want to do a lot. Um, we're going to do it as we um, as we get time and, and and people to work on this. Again, at the bottom, the first thing we want to do is we want to beef up LCS so that we want to so that you can go out to LCS and say I want um, I want a, a pack I want the uh, a new machine and I want this demo data, and and that's that's one of the things we want to get out there because um, otherwise you have to load the packages and and. Um, it takes some time. I think it's worth it to get, get, to get the data that way and, and give you the flexibility, but it does take some time. Uh, the second thing is you'll see a, you know, the kind of core supply chain. The supply chain team is trying to build more process, more industries on top of the supply chain. Plus, um, we're hoping that ISVs as well will build packages on top of our packages. And so if you see in the middle there above supply chain, you'll see ISV, um, um, uh, um, I, I, IEM, I can't remember, it's Industry Equipment Manufacturer, I think it's called, that kind of stuff. We are looking to add more to project accounting expense, like transactions. Um, we're looking to, we're working with the public sector team right now to figure out what approach they want to take. Um, my understanding is that um, you know, public sector people, when you are uh, demonstrating a product, you demonstrate demo data but, um, for the public sector, but you also want to uh, you know, show off some of the commercial stuff as well. So right now we have two databases, and we're trying to see if there's any way we can make that one, or you know, we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. But there would be a public sector component available. There will also be a retail component available. Again, that one's in process. 
the retail team's trying to figure out do they want to use our core financials and just kind of you know create their own supply chain or maybe even use the existing supply chain and just beef it up you know we're trying to make it again modular and kind of less less amount of work so that you don't have to figure out which retail you want to use and all that kind of stuff on top of that we're trying to figure out our countries and so um, we have a lot of countries out there um, based on the, what the ASL team has told us and everything else and most people want to see stuff demoed in their country they don't want to just have a US one or a German one or something like that so we're trying to figure out the country strategy what would we do you know how would we do it that kind of stuff you know do we uh, you know, do we have one one uh, you know legal entity you can change or one package you can you can import into any legal entity anyway you know that would be the kind of that's what we're trying to figure out and then on top of it again we're hoping ISVs you know if we keep these things static so they can work with them ISVs can then layer their stuff on top of ours and just simply um, you know use that instead of creating everything from scratch the the last component is um, you know cost accounting and business intelligence cost accounting covers a lot of areas and so um, it's a pretty deep um, demonstration so there is some cost accounting in there today but we want to beef it up and, and uh, the cost accounting team really wants to make some you know a, a spectacular demo instead of just a simple one and then lastly we just got to make sure that the demo data does a really good job of business intelligence I mean the every demo you do people you know like to see stuff but when they really get down to what you know what excites them is when they see business intelligence so um, we really are you know we want to make that business intelligence work better and we we have stuff out there, but it's not what we want it to be. So that's what we have planned um, for the future. Again, we're going to release every you know every major release. We'll just release the demo data packages updated, um, and um, you know so that's where we're at right now. Any any questions from out there? Cool. righty, Well, um, like I said, it wasn't going to be an hour. This is this is pretty much uh, the presentation that we have. Um, if you have any questions, now is the great time to ask it. Um, just we'll just kind of watch here for another minute or two, and um, if we uh, don't hear anything from you, then we'll be all done. So we'll just give you a, a minute or two to, to ask some questions. All right, thanks, Mike. I have posted a link to a short survey for this web conference in the messages tab. There, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope you found today's information helpful. And if you enjoyed today's web conference or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, please do let us know by accessing that survey. I promise it's very short. The survey scores are on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible. Okay, we just got the one question, and then we'll be we'll be finished. Um, what version is batch ready to post on? Uh, it came out in 7.3, so it came out in the fall release. So um, you can you can go out to the fall release right now, and you'll find it out there. It um, and it works with the demo data packages that we we shipped. If you grab the 900 level package and you see um, HQUS is probably the best one. Uh, if you look at that one, you'll see, you know, you'll see actual um, documents in there like free text invoices and fixed asset transactions. You'll see those in there and then you'll see one more uh, Excel spreadsheet called demo data ready to post and that one will show you how you, how you import the stuff that you want to, to, you want to post. Um, and then again, read the documentation on how you make sure you turn on the process monitor and that kind of stuff. But it's it's all available in 7.3, the, the fall release. It's already out there. Okay, that's all we got. Thank you very much for attending, and uh, we appreciate your um, participation. All right, super. Thank you, Mike. This concludes today's web conference. Attendees can access the web conference recording via the same registration link used to attend today's live broadcast. With that, just a great big thank you to our presenter. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Ryan, for answering questions. And thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us. Have a great day.